Hey guys, Graham here from therecordingrevolution.com. Today I want to talk about the Sapphire Mix Control software. So this is a very specific video for those of you that are using any of Focusrite's Sapphire range of audio interfaces, anything from their USB 6 input interface all the way up to the Liquid Sapphire 56, which I'm using today. All of these interfaces use pretty much the same uh, software as an in-between from your interface to your DAW of choice. So this isn't a Pro Tools specific video, but it is a Sapphire mix control specific video. I was getting a lot of questions and emails about how do you use it to set up headphone mixes. I'm confused by the software, and for good reason. If you just look at it, it kind of looks like a, a rat's nest of confusion, okay? I'm not the smartest guy in the room, and so when I look at something like this, I go, good grief, what am I doing here? All I want to do is set up a headphone mix and take advantage of the DSP chip on this box that lets me have a zero or a low latency monitor mix. What do I do? What do I have to do? How does this interact with my software? And I'm going to show you how I use it and maybe try to clear up some of that confusion. So either you're coming from another brand of interface and this looks confusing, or you're like me and you were a longtime Pro Tools user coming from the world where you never had uh, in-between pieces of software like a, a mixer. Pro Tools users have never had this kind of thing. So I had to get used to it. The basic gist is this go-between piece of software gives you more access to what's going on in the box. And what it allows you to do is take your incoming signals, the mics you've got plugged into your interface, whether it's 1 or 26, whatever, and it allows you to create a custom headphone mix before that audio hits your box. Here's the big idea. Latency, okay? If I plug in my, my vocal mic or my acoustic guitar mic or my bass guitar, by the time that analog signal goes into my box, is converted to a digital signal, goes into your DAW, and then you listen back to your DAW, back through your box, it converts it back to an analog signal to go to your headphones, it's taken a lot of time to do all those conversions and come back to your ears. So you hear maybe your bass guitar that you're plucking, it sounds delayed from what you're actually playing in real time. Or if you're singing, you hear yourself in your real space, and then you also hear your recorded self in supposedly real time, but it's delayed, so it sounds like a chorus effect or a double, and it can throw you off. These types of software mixers are built to help out with that, and they have a DSP chip inside. What, what it does is it allows your incoming signals to come right back out to your headphones before ever being converted to a digital signal. Okay, I hope that makes some kind of sense, but let me show you what this means practically. If I'm setting up to record, I'm looking at this mixer. I have 16 channels here, and that allows me, at least in my interface, to mix and monitor 16 active inputs alongside stuff coming out of my DAW. So, on a real simple example, let's just say you're recording your vocal. You plug it into input one on your interface. Let's take this first fader right here, input one. If you click here, this is where you can name your, your track. So let's just say vocals. All right, so we know channel one is vocals. I've got my audio interface hooked up with my mic plugged into channel one. Up here at the top is where you're gonna be able to set the actual input. So you can route anything you want, but in this case, let's keep it simple. I want this fader of this mixer to be analog input one, okay? That means if I were to sing in analog input one, it would come in this fader, and I'd be able to control how much of that input I'm hearing in my headphones, okay? This is gonna send my vocal directly to my ears right here, okay? I can move it up or down, I can solo it, I can mute it. So far, this has nothing to do with what's going on in my, my DAW, okay? We'll pull it up right here, in theory. Now, if you flip over to your DAW, let's say I'm in Pro Tools right here, but this is gonna be the exact same concept regardless. Let's create a new track, let me, hide all these. Let's create a new track and we'll call it vocals. Okay, because this is what we're recording, let's say. I'm going to set the input to input one of my interface because that's where I've plugged in my microphone, okay? That's what's actually going to be recorded and you would record enable that track. But here's the thing that we're going to do differently. We're going to mute 
the actual vocal track. I'm going to mute it in my software, in Pro Tools, in Logic, in Cubase, whatever you're using. I'm going to mute it because I don't actually want to hear the signal after it's coming back out of Pro Tools because that's what's delayed. I want to mute that, all right? But I know I'll be able to hear myself because I'll be listening through this, through the copy of this signal that's coming right back to my headphones, okay? Now let's say I've got um, back over here some drums and bass and some guitars. So these are things I've already recorded, let's say. I need to hear these, okay? I need to hear these because I need to know what to sing along with. Pretty simple, drums, bass, and guitar. So those aren't muted, but here's what you do in the Sapphire Mix Control. I pretty much have decided of my inputs, which are these 16 channels here, I only need to hear my first input, which is set to analog one, which is vocals. The rest of these I can ignore for now. Over here, they give you a stereo track that's also part of this mix. And this is where you can blend in everything else from your DAW, okay? In our case, I wanna blend in drums, bass, and guitars. So this could be called whatever you want. I called it DAW 1 and 2 because I've set the inputs to this fader to not be one of my actual inputs on my interface, but to be outputs coming from my software, my DAW, in this case Pro Tools. So I've set the left to be DAW 1 and the right to be DAW 2. What does that mean? That means this fader is going to start receiving anything going out of in, out of output one and two of my DAW. Okay, so it's going to be a copy of whatever's sent to my speakers, um, my typical stereo output. All right, that's what I've used this fader to do. This is the handy thing. You get 16, in this case, faders to control your inputs going in, but then you also have a final fader to control a stereo, if you like, output from your, your DAW. In this case, I want to hear everything in Pro Tools, not muted, except for the vocal track, which I have muted in Pro Tools, so that otherwise that would come through DAW 1 and 2, and I would hear a delayed vocal, and I don't need to hear that. So in my software, in Pro Tools, I'm going to mute the vocal track, but what this is basically telling me, if you ignore all these faders, I should hear everything coming out of Pro Tools on one fader here, and my vocal track going into my Sapphire interface. And I have two faders to blend the two. And these are all being sent to mix one. This what this tab is up here, okay? By default, I have it set to a stereo mix. If I unselect this chain, it makes this mix a mono mix, okay? But I'm going to use headphones, and I want to hear it in stereo, so I want to click this and make it a stereo mix. So if you follow me so far, from left to right, I can blend any input going into my interface, blended with one stereo output from my, my recording software, in this case, everything in Pro Tools, and then that's all sent to mix one. This is the final fader of everything happening on the screen. This is mix one. Now this is what I want to send to my headphones. So this is really, really important. This is all of your mixing to get the balance right. But down here is your routing to then send that mix where you need it to be sent. In our simple example, if I'm just recording myself, I need to send this mix to my headphones. Let's say I've plugged my headphones into the front of my Sapphire and I have two headphone outputs. One of them is the same thing as output seven and eight, okay? So if you look up here, I've got a first pair of outputs I could route things to, monitor one and two. These are my speakers, okay? In this case, I've chosen, you can choose any of the inputs you want. I've chosen DAW one and two to be what comes out of my speakers. That's typically what you want. What's coming out of Pro Tools, what's coming out of Studio One, what's coming out of your software, DAW 1 and 2. But down here, these are some more of my analog outputs. And depending on how many outputs you have on your box, that's what you'll see here in the router. In my case, I'm gonna jump down here where seven and eight, there's a little headphone symbol here, and nine and 10, there's a headphone symbol here. In my case, the two headphone outputs on the front of my box 
also mimic output seven and eight and nine and 10. So I'm in the first output of headphones, so this is seven and eight. So by default here I have its output to be DAW one and two, the same thing as what I'm hearing out of my speakers. But I'm recording and I don't wanna hear that, I wanna hear this mix, what I'm calling mix one or vocal mix, okay? That's what I wanna hear because this mix will be DAW one and two blended with my vocal track going into my sapphire which is not delayed okay that is called vocal mix up here when i change the name right there in the track it changed it up on the tap i want that going to my headphones right so here in seven and eight or my first headphone output i need to change it not to monitor an input not to monitor what's coming out of my daw but to monitor a mix which is a combination of my vocal input and what's coming out of my daw so vocal mix, it sees it left, and vocal mix sees it right, okay? It sees both, and so now, if I press record, I would hear out of output seven and eight, or my headphone output on the front, everything that this mix is giving me, which would mean as much or as little of the DAW, and as much or as little of my vocal track. I hope you're following me so far. That is how you create custom mixes because then in essence what you can do is create more mixes over here these different tabs represent multiple mixes you could have do you have another person that's recording at the same time and they need a separate mix we'll turn these two tabs into a stereo tab boom now you could have let's see we'll double click here and call this drums mix okay so this is for your drummer and this is for your vocal so your drummer may have inputs plugged into your ADAT inputs, which would be nine through 16. So I'm gonna turn up his faders here, some kick, some snare, let's say. We'll turn these up, and you could call these kick, snare. You get the idea, you can label these faders just like you would in a DAW, and then set their inputs to be inputs ADAT one, ADAT input two, you get the idea. If that's where your kick and snare mics are plugged into, that's what you'd have. And you can control the first 16 inputs or up to 16 inputs with this zero latency mix. So I'm going to blend kick, snare, and then obviously DAW 1 and 2. And in this case, I would mute the kick and the snare track in the DAW because he wants to hear his drums in real time along with anything coming out of the DAW, which might be your click track, might be your scratch track. He may want to hear the vocalist as well. If they're singing and playing at the same time, you can bring that up. And all of this is being sent to drums mix, which you can turn up here. And then you would have him plugged into, let's say, line input and output 10, 9 and 10, which is my other headphone output. I would change this to be mix drum mix left and mixes drum mix right. You see what we're doing here? We are using the mixer up here to create different mixes on these different tabs, blending signals going into your box that you want to hear instantly, preferably what you're recording, then muting those in your software so you don't hear it a second time, and then blending those with a fader of one stereo output. In this case, I've had my main DAW 1 and 2. This could be anything, but that's what I want them to hear is everything as well. And then that's all sent to this fader, which then you use the router down here to decide where do those mixes end up. And that all depends on where your headphones are plugged into. If they're plugged into the front inputs for headphones, use that. If they're plugged into a headphone amp coming out of the back pair of some of your outputs, like I could have a headphone amp plugged into line and output three and four, and another headphone amp plugged into line output five and six, well then I would want the mixes sent there. This is the gist of how you use the Sapphire Mix Control to listen to real-time audio coming in, blended with audio coming out of your DAW, and set up custom headphone outputs. Okay, I hope that helps you guys. If you have any other questions about using your Sapphire Mix Control, Drop a comment here on the blog or on the YouTube video. I'll try to answer it as best I can. Everyone has slightly different setups, but this is the gist of how it works and how I like to implement it in my DAW of choice, which is Pro Tools. Thanks for watching. 
This is Graham from TheRecordingRevolution.com. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can be up to date on all the new videos coming out each week. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you soon.